how much value you can get from this kind of uh, music. I really appreciate all students and all elders who are here uh, today. And I hope this presentation will be of some, uh, you know, uh, use for you for, you know, emulating and analyzing such wonderful music and trying to imbibe, uh, you know, something out of this music. So the purpose of this uh, presentation or whatever demonstration that you can see is the final uh, uh, outcome is expected with your, your interest and appreciation towards such music. You need not necessarily stick to this, but there are lots of such wonderful, great musicians who has, you know, contributed immensely for the cause of classical, real classical music. And we need to really understand that. It's like when you learn Western music, it's not complete without understanding, uh, you know, a Beethoven or a Vivaldi. So these people are somewhere in that league where you, their, their music still is living on for, for decades right now. So it can definitely move on to centuries when you people start, you know, understanding the depth of this and appreciating it. So that's what, so the purpose is to carry on this legacy of such great soulful music. So the purpose of uh, presentation is uh, uh, that. And uh, having said that, we'll go on directly on the presentation. I have a little... Uh, you know, physical uh, issue right now. I've got a bad back, so I hope you wouldn't mind me sitting and presenting it, right? So I'll, I'll, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yes. And uh, today, I actually having looking back, my you know interest in Madhuramani is music. It's like from my child. So what happened was. I used to play around in my house without knowing anything about music. My mother is a musician. My grandpa was a very good music aspirant and he used to sing very well. So that was music in our family and my mother used to teach a lot. But what I would generally hear is all this Sarli Varsais, Sari Gama Padanisas and which used to be a little boring for me. Every day, day in and day out, I used to listen the same Maya Mala Goda every time with lots of permutation combination and it used to come to me directly without my effort so that was my orientation in music initially thanks to my mom on that and she used to i don't know it's like uh, when you go to sabarimala they'll say the year when one new person is not coming to sabarimala that is when the uh, lord is going to get married and he <laughs> got married for uh, for uh, you know the same case my mom Never had a day without singing the basic Sariyama <laughs> I don't know, that, that was her uh, legacy for almost 30 years. She managed to pull such crowds for Sariyama Padanisa. But having said that, music was inherent on my side. So it was not that for uh, Lalita Ram or uh, for Gokul, it is like God said. They, all, they somehow got into it without such orientation like how I had. I had a better orientation in terms of music, where I used to, I know that this is Sarigava Padanisa, this is Maya Mara, without even really, you know, putting any effort on that. So that was uh, the start. But what really mattered was, my uncle, after all this, my uncle used to come and play a gramophone record, which will have only money ears. I don't know why, but out of all, he will only play money ears music. And Sarasa Samadana was the first song that I started listening to and, and I sung, it somehow felt totally fresh. It was fresh from all these boring, regular sounds that I used to hear in Carnatic. I thought, oh, Carnatic music is also very interesting, is it? It's also so captivating, so energizing. So I, I never felt so initially. And somehow it, uh, you know, started coming into me without, without me really putting any effort. And, that was the first case. Mani is Sarasa Samadana, that gramophone play, really, you know, gave me some basics, gave me some basic stuff about uh, Mani and his uh, music. And so I, I started listening to it, but it was there somewhere in my ear. 
but I never really got, you know, to know this kind of, you know, the depth that uh, right now I am enjoying. Every day I am not able to pass on without listening to at least one hour of his music. It's like that. Now it's, it's become a, a habit or it's become a part of my life right now. So how, why it became so, what made, what made the music became so great? I didn't know because I I used to go to many concerts then. I used to listen to Amal Vasanth Kumari, D K Jayaraman, and T N Seshagopalan sir. These are all in the 80s when they were really trailblazers and they were great and they were real masters in the in the field when in, during the 80s. And I used to listen to them and I used to admire how they sing and all. But somehow the music close to heart was this Sarsa Sangha. Every time I used to beat those thoughts with, no, I go home and listen to Sarasamangana, I'll be fine. Because these music were mind-boggling for me. The other great musicians' music, they were really great and they really had lots of stuff which was really, you know, uh, which was uh, not only, uh, you know, creative, not only emotional content, it had everything that was there. But when I come home, I never had such a good memory of, you know, thinking of those music. I had to come back and settle down with what I was very familiar with, which is the Sarsa Namana. And this gramophone. I will run through this gramophone once again. That's all. And I feel, I feel I'm, I'm fine. So this was my starting. One month I had a stay it was like a jail stay. When I, when I was my, in my sixth class, my mom uh, sent me off to my uh, aunt's house in Madurai. My aunt used to work for Union Bank and my uncle also used to work for State Bank. So both were off. They never had a children. And I was the only guy who used to go and entertain them during my holidays. Right? And <laughs> so they didn't even, uh, they, they used to lock me into the, <laughs> into the place and they'd go for the office. And they ensured that they came back on time so that they will spend some time with me. On that time, during that time, I had only two cassettes which used to occupy my time. One is uh, the gramophone records of Mother Maria collection. The other one is one small live concert which had Sadhananda and Romanda. Every day, I used to listen to this for four to five hours. It was like, hello. <laughs> Hello, Samak. Hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> so every day it used to be it used to be the same thing repeated. So what? How will you feel when you listen to your music in a repeated fashion? Will you will you listen to a song in a repeated manner for every day and not feel bored? I don't know, but it was keeping my time completely engaged when I was in my sixth class. It was keeping my time engaged completely. I used to replay the cast and every now and then I used to listen to the violin piece. Every time it used to sound new. One new aspect used to come to my ear and I used to, oh, okay, this one is there. But I never knew the technicality of Carnatic music. I never knew uh, the Arohanam, Arohanam of any raga. I never knew uh, the Sanchara Bhavam of the raga. I never, in you know, the one more thing is when you get oriented to money and music is you will not you will not be very much keen to, you know, put your ears on the lyrics because sometimes you will feel that he is eschewing the lyrics. But he's not, you not doing that obviously, but you will feel so. So, I never even bothered about the lyrics part of it. I used to listen to the song every now and then and it was like, I started passing the time like that for almost a month. And then when I came back, I felt that I was missing it. When I came home, I, miss, I was missing that cassette and I started pestering my mother to get that cassette somewhere and she went uh, to all the way to Alvar Pet and got all these cassettes for me and then uh, I felt better. So I think it, it became a habit for me to listen to his music and uh, you know one thing, I never knew that I could sing, I never knew that 
I will have such an understanding of ragas. Now I can say that definitely I have got a very good awareness of all the basic samcharam of every raga. I know the arohanam, arohanam. I can understand the swaraprastar of every raga. I can understand how talam control is there. It's all completely because of one music which I listen. The beauty is this music will make you feel listening to many more music. That's the beauty. When you become a fan of money here, you will not become a fan of money here. You will you will become a fan of Carnatic music. You will become a fan of the entire uh, aspect of Carnatic music. You will become a fan instantly. Everybody is singing it. Because the basic aspect of his music is he enjoys. He himself is a fan. So when he sings, when he enjoys it, everybody enjoys. So he enjoys the part of music. He enjoys the Raga Alapana. He enjoys being there in Shruti. He enjoys being there in, in, in the Gantara and then staying there for about a, a few seconds. He enjoys every aspect. So what happens is that enjoyment catches up with us. So it is transformed to us. That's the basic aspect of Carnatic music. When you not enjoy what you do, you will definitely not deliver the best, right? Do it for yourself, do it for others, do it for the stage, do it for achieving something. You should enjoy that. If you're not enjoying it, then it's it's not your thing, right? So that's where I saw the music was completely based on self enjoyment, self satisfaction. He had a satisfaction around his music, and he had nothing to do else, nothing else to do in his life. He was completely soaked in his music. His life, personal life, I didn't want to really elaborate his bi biography because. Most of the musicians' biography will be little similar. They will have a tough, tough beginning, and then a great, uh, you know, rise, and then maintaining the standard. So all of them are, you know, common. So you would have known about it, like seeing Dhoni's uh, movie or seeing uh, Sachin Tendulkar's movie. You'll know that. So there's nothing much that I can add. But one good thing is they all did it with utmost sincerity, and they enjoyed it. First thing they enjoyed it. And then sincerity will come in, right? If you like to, you know, have a clean, neat house, you'll always enjoy it, right? You'll always you'll always keep the house clean and you'll always feel it, you'll feel happy about it. That's the kind of enjoyment they derived in them. So and it, it's 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 a common line for all great musicians. Enjoying self-enjoyment was a common line for all great musicians, especially for Mani Year. Mani Year had a this thing. So, Lantaram, you know, gave this wonderful uh, thought uh, in, in one of his presentations. He's like a child who is jumping into a, you know, a casual uh, droplets of water, you know, They're enjoying the rain, rain, uh, you know, catched water. They're just jumping into one, happily making merry out of it. That's the kind of enjoyment that he derived in his music. He was, he was totally happy singing every day. And he had lots of physical ailment. He had physical disability. Disability like no one. He could not even walk. He could not eat properly. He cannot eat with his hands. He cannot walk. And he had he was completely blindfolded. He had this vision lost long back in his life. And yet he was able to sing and he was able to bring out a music that was that was amazing, that is still amazing, that is still mind-boggling, creative, whatever you say. So, with all the physical difficulties, how he was able to achieve the standard of music was because of the enjoyment aspect. So, that is what I want all of you to, you know, first feel that you have to enjoy singing. So, happily sing, sing for yourself, and then it will definitely spread out, and that's the, that's the base of his music. So let me start the presentation. Uh, so I'll, I'll start with a small invocation by Mani himself. Uh, this is the Raga Saurashtra Jagra uh, Jakriti. Uh, this is Sri Ganapati. The accompanists are uh, the great Lagudi Jairaman and uh, the great Paragat Mani on the Bhidanga. And you can listen to it. Shri <laughs> 
comfortable of what he is delivering and more than that he should be convinced enough that he is bringing the, the vital effects of the raga right without you know feeling you know tense or remorse or anything so when you express sheer joy what happens is it, it comes to you right when you know that yes he is singing with lots of conviction and he must be right you don't really need to know that Saurashtra is a Janya of Surya Kantam and it has uh, Kaisiki Nishadam and Kakali Vishadam somewhere and then Sanida Nida Pa and the knee, the, that knee also comes and this knee or Vishadam is also coming in. How is that? And you can find that the violinist is bringing the Surya Kantam part also. Sanida Nida Pa that part is completely a Surya Kantam part. So, so you, you find that he is totally aware of the grammar of the raga. When he sings that, he is totally aware. This conviction comes only when you have strong foundation of the raga, strong understanding of the raga. When you don't understand the raga, you will not be comfortable singing it, right? When you are very doubtful about the raga, you will not be comfortable. Here, it is all, it's all completely sing. It, it, it is inside completely. That kind of awareness is bringing out such a music, right? So let's let's look at what some of the legends who were part of the golden era of music, where all the great musicians were there, and who also lived almost till uh, last decade, till 2010 or 2012. So even this decade, some of them lived till 2012-13. Let's understand what they had to say about <laughs> such a music. So, what Lalpudi Sar says, his music is simple and soulful to the uninitiated, at the same time captivating to the learned Rasikas. That was the reason why I gave a detailed note about what made his music so beautiful for me when I was totally not aware of Carnatic music, uninitiated. 
you need not be initiators, but you will feel that it is something which is great, very, you will feel happy with an activity. Correct. And it is also captivating to the learned Rasikas. Now I am aware of Surya Kantam. Now I am aware of uh, uh, Saurashtra's uh, Prayogams, Sancharams. Now 